In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use Nest.js to upload files and upload those files to AWS S3. So we'll be able to send requests to a server, upload any kind of file, and make sure we see that file in S3 for storage and later retrieval. I'll show you how we can provide validation to the file we're uploading to our server. And additionally, we're also going to apply rate limiting to our API to ensure we don't allow too many requests within a certain period. Let's jump right in and show you how we can accomplish all this all easily with Nest.js. I'll see you there. Before we jump in, I just want to let you know that my Nest.js microservices course is now out. Feel free to check out the description for a discounted link to this Nest.js course, which has about 300 students and growing. So thank you so much for everyone that has bought the course and is really seeming to enjoy it so far. In this course, we dive deep into implementing complex Nest.js microservices. And if this is something you'd like, feel free to check this out. All right, let's jump right into the video. So we're going to use the Nest CLI to generate our project by running Nest new. I'll call my project uploader and I'm going to use pnpm as my package manager. Then I'll cd into the uploader directory and run pnpm run start dev to start up our server in development mode. So I've opened up the project in VS Code and you can see we have our default boilerplate nest project out of the box with our HTTP server exposed on port 3000 right now. And we have our app.controller with a single get route that will return a simple text string of hello world. And we have our server started so we can launch a test request at our server. So in Postman, I've created a new get request at localhost 3000 and we can send this off and get that hello world response back. So let's use the Nest CLI again to generate a new module called upload. Then I'll use it again to generate a controller called upload. And lastly, we'll generate an upload service. And this is all going to be so that we can accept requests to upload a new file and we want a dedicated module to handle all of this. And now we can see the new upload folder created here with our upload module, upload controller, and upload service. So I'll go ahead and actually get rid of the app.service and the app.controller files as we're not going to use them. And in the app.module, we'll also remove them from here so that we only have the upload module. And in here we have our controller in service, which is where we're going to start from. So before we start implementing file uploads, we need to install the types for the file upload package that Nest.js uses called Multer. So run p npm install dash d for development types slash Multer. And this is the actual module that will handle the form data that is being sent to the server when we send a post request over HTTP and send that multi-part form data format, Multer is going to be what's used to actually parse that incoming request and give us a buffer that we can actually use to do things like upload to different services or a, another backend like AWS S3, which is what we're going to do. And now in our upload controller, let's go ahead and implement a new post route to actually accept the upload. So I will leave this unlabeled because we're already at slash upload. And then to actually parse the incoming requests file, we need to use an interceptor here. So we'll call use interceptors from Nest.js common. And then we're going to accept the file interceptor. And the file interceptors first argument is the name of the field where the file actually resides in the HTML form that's being sent to this route. So we'll specify the name here and just call it file. And now we'll have the actual function name that we'll call upload file. And we can get access to it by using the uploaded file decorator. And now we have access to the file va variable, which will be of type express.multer.file. So now we have access to the raw file this easily. And we have access to the underlying buffer here, which is going to be the actual data stored in memory of this file. And we get additional metadata about the file, like the destination, MIME type here, the path size, and so on. So we can use this information to further upload our file, including passing the buffer to our service layer, which is what we're going to do. 
Firstly, let's just go ahead and log out the file to make sure that we're receiving it correctly from the client. And let's go ahead and implement that next. So with our server running, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Postman and launch a post request at our upload route. So send a request to localhost 3000 slash upload. And importantly, we're gonna click on body here and make sure we select form data now. So in this form data, this is where we're gonna specify the actual key. And of course we wanna select a file because we're gonna upload a file and so we need to make sure this is the HTML key in our form that matches what we selected on our route in the upload controller. Remember we specified the file interceptor and we specified the name of the form field where the file lives. Well, this is the same name here, file and file. So now we need to actually upload a file so you can send whatever kind of file you want to the system right now and send off this request. So you can see we have a 201 created sent back. And if we look at the logs, we can now see our sample data being logged out, including the file name, the type, and the actual buffer here, as well as the size. So additionally, I wanna show you how we can apply simple validation to our file upload. So perhaps we wanna restrict the file type or the size of the file. We can do this very easily by supplying a new pars file pipe from nest.js common and inside of here we're going to supply an object an options object where we specify an array of validators and we can provide a new max file size validator where we're going to specify the max file size is going to be 1000 bytes additionally we can add another validator a new file type validator and this will take an options object where we specify the file type that we want to allow. So let's say we only want to allow JPEG images in our system. So now that we have this parse file pipe in place, if we try to send off a new post request, you can see we have failed validation because the expected size is less than our limit of 1000. So we have a 400 bad request sent. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out these validators so we can continue uploading our file to Amazon S3, which is going to be our next step. So we're ready to set up the AWS SDK in our application so that we can actually configure it and upload our new uploads to S3, which is where we're going to store our uploads. So in our terminal, let's stop our server and let's pnpm install a new package called AWS SDK slash client s3 and we're also going to install the nest.js slash config package which is going to allow us to read in environment variables into our application so we can securely store our aws credentials and provide them to our aws client so first things first let's go into our app module and make sure we set up the config module by calling config module dot for root and we'll initialize it with an is global set to true so that we have this config module globally available and we don't have to keep re-importing it. Next, we're gonna go into our upload service and set up our S3 client. So in our upload service, let's set up a constructor where we inject the config service of type config service from nest.js slash config. And now that we have the config service, we can set our S3 client up. So let's declare a new read-only variable called S3 client and set it equal to new S3 client. And we import the S3 client from AWS SDK slash client S3. And you can see we need to provide an options object where we specify the region where we actually are connecting to S3. So we can take this directly from the config service and get the AWS S3 region environment variable. And I'm actually gonna change this to get or throw to make sure that we throw an error if this environment variable isn't available. And by default, now the AWS S3 client is gonna look for environment variables in our system, including the AWS access key ID and the secret access key. And it's gonna use these credentials to authenticate this client and allow us to connect to AWS. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So in AWS console, make sure you create an account or log in 
And then we're gonna go ahead and click on the account in the top right, and then go to security credentials. Then we're gonna scroll down to the access keys section and click on create access key. And feel free to create a separate IAM account with specific permissions to only upload to S3 if you wanna be a bit more secure. For this example, I'm just gonna create an access key for my root user. I'm gonna take note of the access key here and the secret access key. So let's copy this access key. And in our project, we're gonna create a .m file. Then I'm gonna set the AWS access key equal to the access key. And I'm gonna copy the secret access key and now paste in the AWS secret access key and set it equal to the secret access key. Of course, we never wanna commit the .m file to get because it can contain sensitive information. So we can easily add the .env to our git ignore as well. And this will not be committed to our repository. Now don't forget, we also need to provide the AWS S3 region. And I'm going to use US East one, feel free to use whichever region you would like. Lastly, make sure this AWS access key is actually AWS access key underscore ID in order for the AWS client to pick this environment variable up correctly. It needs to be exactly as shown here. So now, now that we've defined these credentials, the S3 client will be able to authenticate us and we can now upload to S3. Before we do this, I'm going to go back into the AWS console and go to the S3 page where we're going to create a new bucket to upload our uploads to. So I'm going to call this bucket name nest.js uploader and I will be using US East one and I'll use all of the default settings here to block all public access by default and create this bucket. So now that we have the name of the bucket, we can finally define a new method in our upload service called upload. And in this function now, all we have to do is call await this.s3 client.send and we're gonna send it a new put object command which will take a put object command input parameter to specify the parameters of this object. So let's specify this object where we need to firstly define the bucket we're uploading to. So this will be the bucket we just created, whichever name your bucket is. In my case, it's gonna be nest.js uploader. And then we need to define the key, which is gonna be the name of this file that we're uploading as well as the actual body, which is going to be the buffer content. So to define these, I want to actually go ahead and pass these in as parameters to this method. So let's accept a file name of type string, and then we'll take the actual file here, which we will define as a buffer. So then we can set the key equal to file name, and the body will be equal to the file. So now that we've defined our upload method, let's go back to our upload controller and make sure we firstly inject the upload service in here. So we'll define a new private read only upload service of type upload service. And then we're just gonna call await this dot upload service dot upload. So now I need to supply the name of the file and the file itself to our upload method. We're gonna call file dot original name and then file dot buffer to our upload method. Now back in Postman, we can send off a request to upload our sample file. We can see we have a 201 created. And importantly, if we go back to S3 now, we can open up our Nest.js uploader and see that we have our file that has been uploaded to Amazon S3. So we can see how we can quickly and easily implement file upload with Nest.js. Let's go ahead and see how we can easily implement some rate limiting to our file upload API to prevent brute force attacks. To implement rate limiting to our API, we're gonna go ahead and install a new dependency called nest.js slash throttler. Now we can go ahead and restart our development server and go ahead and back in our application in our upload module, let's go ahead and set up the rate limiter module. So we'll add a new imports array and we're going to import the throttler module for root. 
So the throttler module is going to accept an options object where we can specify the time to live, which is going to be the maximum number of requests within this time period we want to allow. So let's say within 60 seconds, we want to allow only three requests to come into our system. That's going to be these options. And then we need to specify a new guard to guard our routes. So open up an options object in the providers array where we'll provide a app guard. And then we're going to call use class and set it to throttler guard. Now, if we go back to Postman and send off one, two, three, four requests, we can see on the fourth request, we're getting a 429 too many requests and getting this exception from the throttler saying there's too many requests. So this is the exact behavior we want. Additionally, we can make this configuration a bit more dynamic by instead calling dot for root async. And now we can provide a use factory where we can inject the config service from Nest.js config. And in this config service, we can then pull out the limit and TTL from a config defined in our environment variable. So we'll call get or throw and call this upload rate TTL. And then we'll specify the limit being set to config service dot get or throw. We'll call this upload rate limit. Finally, don't forget to provide an inject property here where we specify the config service. Now in our dot env, let's go ahead and specify these two environment variables. So the upload rate TTL will keep at 60 seconds and we'll change the upload rate limit to three requests. So now we're reading this in from our .env. Make sure we restart our server so these variables are read in. And we should see the same behavior if we send off three requests. The fourth one gets that 429. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.